What's up everyone, my name is Robbie. This is Robbie and Manila, and today we're talking about the best mid-cap growth ETF. So this is the start of our best mid-cap ETF series. Now I went through all the best large cap ETFs. We went through best large cap growth, value, best large cap dividend, best large cap momentum. And then before that, we went through all the best sector ETFs. So we're starting the best mid-cap ETF series today. Looking at this 10-year chart of the Wilshire family of indexes, we can see that of the different styles, large cap outperformed. Next, we can see that the total market Wilshire 5000 did the best with a 280% rate of return versus the large cap 289% rate of return. Then coming in at third was the Wilshire mid cap, which was a 211% rate of return. And under that was small and micro cap. But what we can see here is going back from the year 2000 to the year 2010, the results are almost reversed. Now, the reason I go through things like this in most of my ETF videos is because I want you to understand that the styles are not always going to outperform in every single time period. Sometimes large cap is not going to do as well. I don't know if that's going to be today, but it's just something that you should keep in mind because as large caps done so well lately, mid cap may be up next or maybe small cap. I'm not sure. But what I do know is in this video, we're going to figure out what is the best mid cap growth ETF. So I hope you stick around. Let's go ahead and get started. So last week I posted a poll to see what you all thought was the best mid cap growth ETF. VOT was the clear winner out of all the votes with 74% of the votes going to that ETF. MDYG had 5%, IJK had 5%, IMCG had 3% and IWP had 12% coming in second place. So let's go through these ETFs. All right, so first we have IJK, which is the iShares S&P mid cap 400 growth ETF. Then we have VOT, which is the Vanguard mid cap growth index fund ETF shares. Then we have MDYG, the Spider S&P 500, sorry, Spider S&P 400 mid cap growth ETF. And then we have IMCG, iShares Morningstar mid cap growth ETF. And finally, IWP, iShares Russell mid cap growth ETF. Let's start with the fees. The most expensive of these is IWP with a 0.23% or 23 basis points. Then we have IJK at 0.17%. Then we have uh, MDYG at 0.15%, then we have VOT at 0.07, and IMCG 0.06%. So IMCG is the cheapest and VOT is pretty much exactly equal to that, let's say. And then the question is, is IWP worth uh, that much more in the expense ratio? So we're gonna have to answer that question, of course. Let's talk about dividend yield. So this is these are growth ETFs, so of course you don't expect a lot of yield, but they do have some yield on these. So IJK is 0.55%, VOT is 0.39, MDYG is 0.76, IMCG is 0.48, and IDBP is 0.35. Nothing has crazy yield, but MDYG does a bit higher of a yield. Let's talk about the weighting scheme of these ETFs. So IJK is market cap weighted, VOT is multi-factor, MDYG is market cap, IMCG market cap, and IWP is multi-factor. If you don't know what this means, market cap weighting means that the larger companies based on their mar market cap are gonna have a higher weighting in the portfolio. Multi-factor is they're using probably different factors to see how much weighting each stock should be. Next up, let's talk about the PE ratio just to see if these are expensive ETFs. Now, we're talking about mid-cap growth, so we would think it'd be a little bit more expensive than let's say the market. Um, IJK actually isn't that high of a PE ratio, 18.1. VOT with a 31.9, that's a higher PE ratio. MDYG 18.1, IMCG 25.6, and IWP at 27.5. Total assets in these ETFs are all over a billion dollars, so they're all pretty big ETFs. For number of holdings, actually these ETFs have a lot of holdings in them, all of them do. So they all have over uh, 150 holdings in them, some have as much as 396. So actually very um, not very concentrated ETFs, they're pretty diversified ETFs. You know, I always like to see the sector weighting, so let's see what's going on in the sectors. These all have decent consumer discretionary weightings, all over 10%. They don't have much in energy, any of these ETFs, so they all have kind of low energy weighting. Some of them have decent financial weightings, for example, IJK. MDYG also has some decent financials rating, weighting. They all actually have a decent size in healthcare, so all of them have over 10%. Industrials are also a big one in this. And information technology, some of these have a lot of weighting in IT, so 
IWP has a 34% weighting, VOT has 33%. So those two have a lot of uh, IT weightings. Everything else mostly under 10%. Next, of course, we're talking about a mid-cap ETF, so we want the market cap to be mostly mid-cap. So what I did when I was selecting ETFs, I made sure that at least 50% was in mid-cap. So for these, IJK and MDYG both have a little bit of small cap uh, inside these portfolios, but they're mostly mid-caps. VOT is pretty much pure mid-cap, 74%, with a little bit of large cap in there. IMCG is the purest of the mid-caps. It has almost no large cap or small cap. And IWP has a bit of a large cap in there as well, but you know, 68% in mid cap, so pretty high mid cap. Let's move on to everyone's favorite part about this, which is the returns of these different ETFs over different years. And by the way, this will be including dividends. So here are the ETF returns over the past five years. And as you can see, I did include SPY, so the S&P 500 index, just to see if any of these, these did do better than the S&P 500, which is a large cap uh, index. So. IMCG had the best return out of all of these, which is 125%. Then uh, SPY, so the, the only one that did better than the S&P 500 over the past 10 years was IMCG. Uh, VOT came in next with a 104% return. Uh, IWP with 99.88%. MDYG and IJK much lower there under uh, 70% area, or in the 70% area. Now let's take a look at the three year instead of the five year. So in terms of the three year returns, we have SPY actually outperforming all of them, then IMCG, VOT, IWP, MDYG, and IJK. Again, uh, IMCG the highest return and then VOT coming in next. Let's take a look at one year and then year to date. So one year so far we have SPY of course outperforming all of these, VOT coming in next and then IMCG. So VOT does move up a bit in the one year. And then MDYG, IJK, and IWP all actually have negative returns. Year to date looks a little bit different. So we have SPY, of course, down 5%, but mid caps did worse than the larger cap stocks in the market. So MDYG having a negative 8%, IJK negative 9%, VOT negative 11, IMCG negative 11, and IWP negative 11. So before I announce which one I think is the best, I want to go back to our poll here and show you that VOT was the one, overwhelmingly, that you all thought was the best mid-cap growth ETF. And I'm actually gonna tell you that that's not my pick. Now before I even mention why, I'm gonna show you real quick that yes, VOT was the second cheapest, but there's actually one that was even cheaper, which is IMCG, the iShares Morningstar mid-cap growth ETF. And that is my pick. Why IMCG, you may be asking? Well, as you remember, in the five year and in the three year, it did outperform VOT. It's got about the same expense ratio, I mean 0.1% difference, so we're, we'll call it the same. And so I actually think this is a very underrated ETF. So you can see not many people voted for it, and I think it's a really great ETF, and I think for me, this is my top choice. So all right, let's go ahead and let's do some technical analysis on this ETF. Going back to when the market fell during the pandemic, you could see that this ETF is up about 117% over that time period. Let's zoom in real quick and look at this a little bit closer. So for IMCG in terms of technicals right now, it does look like there's uh, at least one thing that's kind of positive. It is trading above its 50 day moving average. So that is a check mark for something good. You have the 200 day moving average up here in the 69 area. This is trading for about uh, $64 per share right now. Let's turn the moving averages off to make this a little easier to see. So you do see that this is in a downtrend. This is the downtrend line right here. It's hit it a few times, so it's bounced off that trend line. So decent support on the bottom of the trend line. The top of the trend line had two hits. This thing might get up close to this uh, top part of the, the parallel uh, channel here. So we're gonna see if this rejects it or not, if it gets back up there. I have some longer term resistance going back a few months here. This is at about $66 per share, and then we have some more uh, support down here at 59. We also have a declining RSI, which is not looking so great. So that's actually a pretty uh, decent slope on that. And then it uh, looks like MACD is starting to turn over a bit, get a little closer to the signal line. If I had to take a guess of what might happen with this in the short term, uh, well, this RSI is not looking so good. Of course, it can also pop up here, but it might come back down closer to like the 35s, which is where these little areas were. And if that happens, this can go down to this uh, support area. The only thing that might hold that up is that moving average. So you can see this little blue moving average here. So it's possible maybe it does act as some support 
And maybe if that happens, this thing consolidates in this area uh, close to this um, resistance line. So anyway, I'm not sure what I would do timing the entry point on this. If I like the stock, if I'm just dollar cost averaging, of course, I would uh, be buying this now and just buying it over the long term. If I was looking more at timing some type of entry on this, I would probably wait to see if what happens with this moving average, because I think if it does trade below this, it's going to go down further. And also, there's not much to miss out on, maybe because this uh, downtrend line, the top of the, uh, the parallel channel, is right there. So I do think that that plus this resistance line is probably going to at least uh, hold the price of the stock there for a bit. So anyway, that's all I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching, as always. And if you like this video, please hit that like button. Subscribe to see future content like this. Let me know in the comments if there's any other specific ETF videos you want to see, or stock videos for that matter. And watch another one of my videos on the end screen right now.